had such an interesting life. It's just, it's just unreal. We, we grew up in a small college town down in New Concord. And it's, it's where uh, Muskingum College is. Kids in New Concord uh, were very, very close, and, and, and we had, oh, we had uh, picnics, we had hikes, we had uh, ice skating, we were at, at the college. I mean, we just enjoyed, I just was a happy soul there. The very first time that I, I realized that I was not like all of the other kids, was in the sixth grade, and uh, I got up to uh, give a poem, and one of the uh, kids laughed, and I thought, uh-oh, I am not like anybody else in this room. I think I was the only stutterer in town at that time. I was never asked to recite in junior high, or high school, or college, but I was lucky because I was in a small school where everybody knew me and uh, I was accepted. There have there, been some awful things happened. That lots of people would turn away, lots of people would laugh, lots of people would uh, not even want to be close to me. Uh, our daughter will always remember after John's first flight, uh, he was asked to speak for Congress. There was a reception in my honor and Lynn's and Dave's. And Lynn will always remember some of the people when they came up to me and I couldn't talk, they would turn away. The way we knew about this place was we had heard Ron Webster, who, was, who started this, this stuttering school. We had heard him being interviewed on, on NBC. And uh, it was so interesting. And, because I had been trying to find some help someplace, and there I was for three weeks, going through something so so different and learning to say each letter of the alphabet. Like the third week, they had us go out to a shopping center, and they gave us assignments, and uh, we had because that's when I went to shopping centers or uh, went shopping. Period. I. I would hunt and hunt and hunt and hunt for what because I just couldn't ask. It was it was exciting to go to a shopping center and I could ask correctly uh, uh, just how I uh, well it's just like a, a normal speaking person would be talking. Those three weeks we weren't allowed at all to see our family or to call or anything. We were so when I called John, he cried and people just couldn't believe that I could really talk. Like I am talking now, like they were, it's just unreal what I can do now. It's, just, it's exciting, it's fun. It's nice to help people too. Uh, I, uh, I get very involved with uh, other people who stutter. forever and ever, you might say. We just want, we've enjoyed each other. Uh, after Dad graduated from Ohio State Dental School, they wanted to move back to New Concord. And his mother and dad moved over there at the same time. And the Glens and the Casters became very, very good friends. So I've known John since we were two years old. <laughs> and when we were graduating from high school, we sort of thought, oh, let's elope. And our families, both couples said, you're going to college. I still have my engagement ring, which is John's always wanted to buy me a larger ring. And I said, honey, that thing cost $125, and that was a lot of money then. I don't, I don't need a larger ring. But three, three days after he had received his wings and he was home, we were married. And that was at the beginning of World War II. In our married life, we've moved 33 times. 
And uh, when our kids were born, and he would go overseas, then I would bring them back to New Concord too, and we would live in the up, up, upstairs part of my mother and dad's house. And he would, when he would come home, the kids were, they, they just were all over him, and I would always show them, show the kids his picture, because I wanted them to remember how he looked, so that he, so they wouldn't be surprised when he walked in. Over here, I would I would drive him up here to the Columbus Airport from New Concord, and to see him get on a little DC three and head off, and uh, that was really tough. But uh, uh, we, the Marine Corps was we. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. We, we really didn't realize what his first flight was, was, was going to cause our country to all come together and be so excited. And uh, we weren't prepared for that at all. It, it just caught us unaware. First astronaut flight in Friendship 7, I had to, I, I never even heard the word astronaut. I had to learn how to spell that word. I was, I really, I didn't think we should be going out to into a God's heaven. I mean, I just think he would never make it back. Then it came time for him, and then his launch kept being postponed. I, th I forget how many times it was postponed. And uh, when it finally came, I was scared to death. Uh, I asked him first, <laughs> because I knew it was going to be the first one. I said, honey, is it okay if I go downtown and buy a new suit? And I liked it because we didn't have much money. And lo and behold, he said, why, of course. So, of course, I went down to a Garfinkel's, which back then was the most expensive <laughs> store in, in Washington, D.C. <laughs> and I found a suit, which they, they, they uh, fitted it to me. I was so afraid that that he would never make it back. And matter of fact, one of the astronauts, when he was having a problem, they didn't know if, if his heat shield was going to come off or not. They called me and said he might not make it back. And then when he did, and then when he, and then the, all of the excitement started, and then I hadn't had my new suit on yet. And so when I, uh, when he was going to speak before Congress, I thought, by golly, this is, this is what I'm going to wear. I put it on, and I had lost 12 pounds. So I had to get a great big safety pin, which I luckily had, and I, I pinned my skirt <laughs> together because it was going to fall off. I didn't realize how much weight I had lost because I, I was so afraid. How did I cope? I knew that, I knew that John was, was doing his job. I knew that John was doing what he loved to do because he, he really, truly was, he loved it. I would pray every night and I guess my prayers were answered because he made it. <clears throat> Plus he was happy and he was good. He was the best. John and I have, after his first flight, we didn't expect it to be the news that it happened to be. We just knew that we had to work hard to keep our family as it always had been, Dave and Lynn and John and me. So we were very, very private. So in going back to Washington as a Senate wife, I had an office in, in John's office, a small room. Uh, I wasn't paid, but uh, I would go over to the uh, a gallery and, and sit up there and listen to what was, what was going on. I would, go, I would go to his hearings and learn a lot. Uh, I would go to other hearings and I could take things down in shorthand. And I would help with the uh, 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 constituents when, they, when uh, they would come in. I would meet with them and uh, I loved it. I loved it. The part of politics that I, I honestly scout on her I love is to meet the people because you meet all kinds and all handshakes. I mean, just so, so different. It's just, I really enjoy that. We say it over and over and over again, even now. We say it. we've been, we've had such an interesting 
life. It's just, it's just unreal.